Greetings, guitar engineers. I'm Desi Serna, and today I'm going to show you a very useful guitar hack where minor chord shapes can become and be used in place of major seven chord shapes. If you're familiar with how basic minor chord shapes are formed on the fretboard, then you can use them to play major sevenths without needing to learn any new chord shapes. To show you how this works, we're going to take a look at a portion of the song Tin Man by America. All right, so here is the guitar tab for the song Tin Man by America. I've pulled it up at sheetmusicdirect.com, which is a fantastic resource. Great place to buy um, very accurate sheet music and tablature. And we're going to focus on this part right here, the verse. And we see that the chords are G major 7 for a full measure, and then C major 7. Let's take a look at this G major 7 chord shape first. So this is part of a G major 7 chord, and uh, here would be a more complete version of it if you use your pinky to play the 5th fret of the 4th string. There's your root G. And so we have G, B, D, and F sharp, and that's a root, 3rd, 5th, and then there's the major 7. Now the notes G, B, D, and F sharp form a G major 7 chord. Those notes are found all over the fretboard, and so there's different ways that you could combine them to make different forms of G major 7. For example, you might see someone do something like this, or something like this, or something like this, or something like this. But in the song Tin Man, it sounds like they just used uh, these three notes here. And that's B, D, and F sharp. And what I want to point out here is that if you didn't know better, you might think this was part of a B minor chord. Here's B minor. And the top three strings are B, D, and F sharp. So the chords B minor and G major 7 actually share common notes. B minor is made of the notes B, D, and F sharp. B, D, F sharp. And G major 7 is made of the notes G, B, D, F sharp. G, B, D, F sharp. So what this means is, you could actually play any form of B minor on the fretboard. And as long as the rest of the music is clearly establishing a G note in the bass position, then your B minor chord tones will actually sound like a G major 7. Now, I'm going to show you how you can take advantage of this a little bit later. But before I get into those details, let's take a look at the next chord in this progression. So after G major 7, you switch to a C major 7, and if we take a look at the particular uh, fingering here, it looks like this. So that's B, E, and G, and it comes out of a larger form of C major 7 that looks like this that you might be familiar with. And you're just doing the top three strings. And that's B, E, and G. Now, you might recognize that this chord shape looks like a minor chord shape. It looks like what you would use for D minor if you were in the open position like this. And if you take just these three notes and move them up, this would be an E minor. There's your root E. And indeed it is. An e, is, e minor is made up of the notes E, G, and B. And C major 7 is made up of the notes C, E, G, B. So what that means is you could use E minor chord shapes and they could actually function as C major 7 chords so long as there's something else in the instrumentation that is playing a C note in the bass position, which is the case here in the song Tin Man. So this song uses a G major 7. And I'm going to play the root G there just to get your ear uh, used to it. And then it goes to a C major 7. 
like that. We've got a uh, syncopated um, guitar strum pattern here. That's down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up. And here it is with the song. And here now I've hopped over to Ultimate Guitar, and I see that they actually have an official tab here, which is nice because I can take advantage of the um, player controls and the uh, backing track. So here is a little bit of that verse. Okay, that's kind of using uh, MIDI sounds, but I've got an option right here where I can actually hear this played with a backing track that uses real instrumentation. So let's listen to that again. Okay, that sounds uh, better. And now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm gonna actually mute the guitars here in this track so I can just use the other instrumentation. And I'm going to highlight portion of the verse here. Okay, so now I'm looping a portion of that verse here minus the guitars, so I have a backing track. It's just going to repeat. And I'll play along. Okay. So now we're ready to take advantage of the hack that I pointed out at the beginning of this video. So I'm going to show you how I can go through and follow these chord changes with different forms of G major 7 and C major 7, but I'm just going to be using basic minor chord shapes. So we're already doing that in one position here. We're taking part of a B minor chord, but we're using it to form a G major 7, and then we're taking part of an E minor chord but we're using it to form part of a C major seven. And then I can go to the next position. So here's B minor in this position. If I go to the next position to play B minor, I'd have a B minor chord right here. And I'm gonna play just the top three strings of it. But if I have a G in the bass, or some another instrument in the music playing the bass, then this isn't gonna sound like a B minor. It's gonna sound like a G major seven. And likewise, I could play E minor right here. There's a standard bar chord for E minor. If I play just the top three strings, I get uh, this chord shape. But again, if I have another instrument playing C in the bass position, this is not gonna sound like an E minor. It's gonna sound like a C major seven. So let me play along with my little backing track that I'm using on ultimate guitar here. And I'm gonna play B minor to E minor in this position, creating the sound of G major seven to C major seven. Then I'm gonna come up here and play B minor to E minor in this position, creating the sound of, like, once again, G major seven to C major seven. So in this position, if you want to make a connection to a major chord shape that you might be familiar with, this portion of the B minor chord becomes G major 7 if you hear G major in the bass position. And if you play uh, G in C form, using a C form bar chord with your pinky at the 10th fret of the 5th string, there's uh, G major in C form. And if you take your middle finger off, that becomes a C major 7 form, but it's actually G major 7 we're using just the top portion of it because these notes are part of G major 7. They're also part of a B minor. So you could think of it either way. And sometimes I like to think of it this way just because I'm so familiar with this basic shape.
And then for the C major seven, we use these three notes that came out of a standard E minor bar chord here, but you could also think of it coming out of a C major shape like this. There's C, 10th fret of the fourth string. So there's C major seven. You might think about C right there. Or maybe a C major shape like this. And then there's your major seven. So this comes out of either E minor or that C major seven shape. And we can keep going. So here in the next position, remember we're think I'm thinking B minor and E minor. I've got a B minor chord I could play right here. So I'm kind of using that D minor chord shape that we used for E minor. Now I've got it all the way up here. My ring finger's at the 12th fret of the second string. That's B, so there's a B minor. And next I want to go to an E minor shape. Well, I've got E minor right here. I wouldn't normally play a bar chord there, but I can play the top portion of it. This B minor would come out of this G major 7 chord shape, just like it came out of this C major 7 chord shape, G major 7. And then this, that's C major 7. You can think of it as coming out of this uh, C form major 7 chord shape or an E minor shape like that. So however you want to think of it, here's our shapes. And you could use these as well. So let me start the track over and I'll play through all three of these positions. So I'm going to start with B minor to E minor. Then I'm going to go B minor to E minor and then B minor to E minor. And then I could play this again an octave higher, B minor to E minor, and so I'm playing these chord changes, essentially using different uh, inversions of the major seventh chords. So this is a useful hack because it allows me to play major seventh chords in different positions on the fretboard while thinking of something much simpler. For me, I'm very familiar with basic minor chord shapes, and so it's just really easy for me to go position to position and play those familiar forms. Of course, I'm also familiar with major seventh chord shapes, and I can see how these forms tie into them. So really, I kind of have both things going on in my brain. But it's still a useful hack. It's just one of these things that helps us guitar players quickly make sense of things, quickly orient ourselves as we go position to position by connecting something that might be more complex with something that's simpler. So anytime you're called to play major seven chord shapes, assuming that you have something else in the instrumentation that's taking care of the root for you, you can actually play different inversions of minor chords. And in fact, as you learn more and more songs, when you come across major seventh chords in the songs, it's very likely that the shapes in use are actually also part of minor chords. And now you can recognize that and make the connection to major seven chords. Hey, if you found this video helpful, please click like and leave me some positive feedback. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below and I'll reply. Perhaps this lesson is exactly the sort of thing you need to be focusing on right now. Or maybe your playing needs attention in other areas. If you need help determining what you should specifically be working on right now in order to get your guitar skills together, move forward, and reach your music goals, go to my website, guitarmusictheory.com. 
answer the questions I ask you about your playing, and I'll send you free custom video instruction calibrated to your current level. I'll get you on the right track so your guitar skills come together, you can play your favorite songs, you can move forward and reach all your music goals. Enroll in your free video course now at guitarmusictheory.com. You can click on the link in the video description. Well, thanks for watching. I'm Desi Serna. Before you go, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Click on the notification bell to receive alerts when new videos are uploaded. Then keep playing and stay tuned for more.